Good afternoon and welcome to the daily video check-in for today, Tuesday, August 11th. This past Shabbat, I did not have to lead services. So in a way, you might think it was maybe a little bit of a less of a Jewish day, less observance of Shabbat than uh, I might normally have because I wasn't leading an entire Shabbat morning service in Torah study. However, in a way, it was actually a more Jewish observance. I feel like I was lucky that this Shabbat was much more like a real, uh, you know, contained real Shabbat menucha, real Shabbat rest. Uh, it was, was part of what I did this Saturday that I don't always get to do, even though it's Shabbat. It's one of the cruel ironies of of uh, being a member of the clergy, you devote your, your life to Judaism, to Jewish community, and it means that you don't get to uh, observe Shabbat and the holidays and uh, your own personal practice is sometimes put to the side uh, for, you know, in favor of what you do for the community. It's, you know, I'm not asking for anyone to feel sorry for me. It's what we do. I, I get it. Um, but it nevertheless is this kind of interesting dichotomy of when we're off, we can actually be more Jewish than when we're actually working. And it, it led me to think about a couple of other things that are that are going on uh, right now. I actually had two different multimedia experiences that were particularly Jewish that uh, helped me to understand, I think, and got me thinking a little bit about this idea of who we are as Jews and what role Judaism plays in our life in a, in a larger way. The first is that I watched the new Seth Rogen movie, which is on uh, HBO Max, if you have that, if you have HBO or, or Cinemax, um, and uh, it's called An American Pickle, and it's kind of a crazy story. Um, it's about um, a Jewish man, you know, from the old country who emigrates to, uh, to New York and uh, gets a job working in a pickle factory and falls accidentally into a large vat of pickles and pickle juice just as the factory's being, factory's being closed and it's covered up and a hundred years later is discovered and the pickle juice has preserved him completely and uh, he meets his grandson and uh, they're actually the same age at this point because he's been preserved for a hundred years um, and, uh, and it's about their lives together, about the contemporary um, app developer and uh, his, um, his actually great-grandfather, not grandfather, his great-grandfather, the uh, newly restored pickle man. So it's got all sorts of Jewish content. It's, uh, it's a very, uh, well, I'll use the language that Seth Rogen uses. It's not just a Jewish movie. It's a very Jewy movie. Um, and I was also listening on my run early this morning. I often listen to um, Mark Maron's uh, podcast. And on his podcast, he had Seth Rogen as his guest. And they were talking about American, an American pickle. And Mark Maron, who also is Jewish, and Seth Rogen is Jewish. Seth Rogen, actually, a Canadian Jew from Vancouver, British Columbia. So we're, we're similar in those ways. But um, they had this conversation that was really all about Judaism and what it means to be Jewish and who they were as Jews and what they thought about Israel and what they thought about Jewish Americans and it was you know there was a lot of controversial things that I think they said and not always the most supportive of Israel and you know um, I'm not I'm not uh, a full supporter of everything they had to share by any means but it just really got me thinking about what it means to uh, be somebody who is born Jewish, be somebody who chooses Judaism, uh, what it means to consider yourself Jewish, whether that means you are religious or not religious, or just what it, what is the essence of being a Jew? And uh, it's funny, Seth Rogen said one thing. He said, you know, I am just so not, I'm clearly Jewish, but I don't believe at all, and I don't really believe in anything that is Jewish, but I am Jewish. And I, if I were having a conversation with him right now, I would say, just by that statement, he actually does believe very much in what it means to be Jewish. Maybe just not purely religious elements, and that's a whole other conversation. But as I was thinking about how Jewish he is, and he makes a movie that's a, such a Jewish movie, and so much of what he does is Jewish in nature, even if it's not religious in nature, that um, that's often how uh, we as Jews have the role that we've played in really throughout you know, centuries and centuries, but uh, also 
the role that we play in American culture. So uh, as I was thinking about, here's another almost non sequitur about this pickle man in an American pickle. And I was thinking about, well, George Gershwin, who is a, a Jewish American composer, and he actually wrote an opera that's about the South and not about Jews at all. But instead of the pickle man in Porgy and Bess, he actually brings out the honey man and the crab man and the, the strawberry woman and this idea of the the person who's defined by the food they make or the, that they sell. And uh, so it led me to think of how Gershwin really was a Jewish composer, or was he a Jewish composer? We know he's an American composer, and so I thought I'd share with you one little uh, musical detail that I think uh, shows this connection between popular culture and Jewish culture. So, if we take a famous song from Porgy and Bess, and that famous song would be, It ain't necessarily so. It ain't necessarily so. The stories you're liable to read in the Bible, it ain't necessarily so. That song is sung by a kind of drug dealer, uh, unsavory character named Sportin' Life. And he sings this song about uh, how Bible stories aren't really necessarily so true. And how did Gershwin said it? Well, it ain't necessarily so. It's this song about what you read in the Bible isn't necessarily true. And yet the tune is almost identical to the tune that we sing before we read the Bible, before we read Torah. So, it ain't necessarily so, sounds an awful lot like Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMavorach Baruch Adonai HaMavorach Le'olam Va'ed And then the stories you're liable to hear in the Bible, it ain't necessarily so. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Amin Venatan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Adonai Notena Torah So I think it's not a not a mystery where Gershwin got that tune uh, for a popular song, not Jewish at all, but somehow is drawn from the Jewish chant of those blessings that we chant before we read Torah. So some thoughts for today, and I will see you all soon. Have a good afternoon.